everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named Game with Reversing taken from today's Code Forces round. This is an excellent problem which teaches you the basics of game theory and casework. In this problem, we are basically given two strings S and T of the same length consisting of lowercase Latin letters. Alice and Bob are the two players of this game and they go a taking turns. So first Alice starts with the string S and uh, Alice can choose either the string S or the string T and replace any character in the string with another character. Then Bob goes and chooses one of the strings and reverses it. We need to find out uh, what is the duration of the game. If Alice is trying to minimize the duration of the game and if Bob is trying to maximize the length of the game. So for example, let's say that we have the two strings A, B, C, D, E and A, B, X, D, E. Since the objective is to make the two strings equal, uh, where we have uh, these two strings, Alice will obviously just uh, choose C and make it equal to X. And uh, in, in exactly one second or in one time period, the game will get over. So that's why the output for the first sample test case is one. Uh, in the second example where we have the strings hello and olio, uh, we, we try to make sure, Alice tries to make the strings equal uh, in the minimum number of uh, time periods. So that's why um, we know that uh, we know that Bob is going to reverse the string in the next operation. So let's let's write the reverse of the string first, and then let's try to construct the answer. So since we know Bob is going to do this, Alice will think ahead, and Alice will just replace this with an O, so that uh, when Bob reverses the string, the strings become equal. So either way is if Bob reverses the first string or if Bob reverses the second string. It gives the same output and this actually forms our uh, first observation uh, which is which is when Bob reverses the string it's the same so Bob can reverse either of the two strings and it doesn't matter it does not matter which string Bob reverses because uh, the only thing which matters is the relativity of the strings, whether one string is equal to the other. And similarly, uh, it does not matter which string Alice is making updates on. Alice uh, is modifying because again, we just need to make the two strings equal to each other. So these two observations basically tell us that you can just consider the first string. So just take string S, try to make S equal to T uh, and uh, all the operations are performed on the first string because uh, we can just, uh, it doesn't matter which string you're performing the operations on. It's going to be the same whether you reverse the first string or the second string or whether you change the characters of the first string or the second string because both strings have to become equal to each other in the end. So that's why you try to make S equal to T and do this such that Alice is minimizing and Bob is maximizing the number of operations. So in order to do this, uh, we just need to consider two cases um, and the two cases which you need to consider are the case in which the last operation, so the last move is done by Alice or the last move is done by Bob uh, or or another way to look at this is uh, so, so these, these two cases actually don't help us that much sorry for the mistake the, the, the two cases which will actually help us are the, the number of moves done by Bob is even or the number of moves done by Bob is odd and the reason why we have these two cases is in the first case when Bob does an even number of moves we know that the string will be the same. This means that S is uh, returned 
to its original to its original ordering however in the second case uh, s is reverse so this is the only reason why we have two cases uh, in the first case s has, has the same order and in the second case s gets reversed and uh, you can handle the second case uh, and the first case separately and take the minimum of the two answers so in the first case when s is in the original order you just need to count how many characters are different between s and t and in the second case you need to count different characters between reverse of s and t and you take the minimum of the answers in the two cases so let's say you know that there are uh, c1 characters different between s and t and in the second case you know that there are c2 characters different between reverse of s and t then uh, you need to you need to basically convert c1 into the number of moves in case one and c2 into the number of moves of case two and you take the minimum of the two answers so now i'll just explain how we can find out uh, how many moves are there if there are c1 characters different between s and t uh, and how many moves are there if there are c2 characters different between reverse of s and t so uh, so if if there are c1 characters different between s and t then we know that uh, let's consider example so let's say that there's nothing different between s and t so then uh, if c1 is 0 this means that there are no moves or uh, if c1 is 1 this means that this means that alice just makes the two strings equal in one move so that's fine if c2 is 2 this actually means that alice moves then bob reverses it then alice moves and then bob reverses it so there's actually four moves so alice makes them equal then bob reverses it then alice makes them equal and then bob gets it back to the original string um if c1 is equal to 3 then then alice reverses it alice makes a move uh, bob reverses it then alice makes a move then bob reverses it and then alice makes a move so this is actually just five moves um and if c1 is four this will actually be uh, eight moves so because uh, in the end we need bob to reverse it so uh, in general you can see that it's going to be uh, 2n if 2 2 times c1 if c1 is even and 2 times c1 minus 1 if c1 is odd because if c1 is odd then last move is by alice and we are done however the last move should be by bob if c is uh, even and only after the reverse we are done and um, similarly for c2 it will be the exact opposite it will be 2 times c2 minus 1 uh, if c2 is odd and 2 times c2 if c2 is even I, I mean the opposite of this so 2 times c2 if c2 is odd and 2 times c2 minus 1 if c2 is even and we just need to handle the border case when, when c2 is 0 so we just set max max of 0 comma these answers so so in, so, in, in short we just need to compute answer 1 equal to 2 times c1 or 2 times c1 minus 1 answer 2 equal to 2 c2 or 2 times c2 minus 1 and we take the minimum of the two answers and we max it with 0 to ensure that uh, it, the answer is not negative and uh, that's the entire solution so now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea of computing uh, the number of different strings in in o of n so in the code uh, for each test case i take in the value of s and t i compute how many uh, differences are there between s and t and how many differences are there between s and reverse of t and uh, you, you can do this as reverse of s comma t it doesn't really matter because the two strings are equivalent uh, in the end they should be equal and um, and basically once you know c1 and c2 you do exactly what i said in the whiteboard if c1 is even you do 2 times c1 uh, otherwise you do 2 times c1 minus 1 and similarly if c2 is or you do 2 times c2 otherwise you do 2 times c2 minus 1 and in the end you print the minimum of c1 and c2 or oh, there's there's one border case if c2 is 0 or uh, this means that 
we need to still perform two operations because Alice needs to move first and then Bob needs to reverse the string. So uh, in notice that in the second case, uh, we are ensuring that S and uh, reverse of S become F, S and reverse of T become equal. So this means that Bob needs to reverse a string and this means that Alice needs to move first. And that's why you need exactly two operations. So that's why you take the max of answer comma two uh, over here. But over here, you just take the max of answer comma zero. And in the end, you print the minimum of these two. So you can verify that this simple code gets accepted. Uh, I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you have any doubts in any part of the solution, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.